Now, we're going to take you through the papers now. Here with us to review them are the anthropologist Mariana Hotter and the broadcaster Pete Price. So, welcome back to both of you. Uh, good to see you there. Um, so, uh, Marianne, you want to pick, up, uh, pick out the, the Guardian's front page to kick us off. And this Tory leadership battle has got a, a lot of coverage. It's still got a long way to go as well. Um, but it looks like Rishi Sunak is trailing if you look at the polls of, of Tory members. So, what's the Guardian suggesting that he might do next? to try to win them round. Yeah, that's right. So if you look at the electorate as a whole, everyone in the UK, then they're um, neck and neck, uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak in terms of popularity. But if you look at Conservative voters, Liz Truss is, is heading, um, heading potentially for a victory. So Rishi Sunak appears to be, I don't know, pulling out all the stops, if you will, kind of going to those slightly murkier areas, which are um, maybe not quite as centrist for conservative values, but perhaps kind of rally some degree of grassroots support. So <coughs> a few days ago, um, quoting that he was going to stop left-wing agitators from bulldozing British values. Now, what does uh, he mean by that? Things like pulling down historic figures, replacing the school curriculum with anti-quote, anti-British propaganda, and uh, rewriting the English language so you can't even use words like man, woman or mother anymore without causing great offence. Oh, and you think, my immediate thought, Anna, is, oh, come on, Rishi, you are better than that. And also, come on, Conservative Party members, surely you're better than that as well. This should not appeal to you because it's nonsense. I mean, and he then says that he has zero interest in provoking culture wars. And you go, well, what exactly do you think that was then? Um, and it, it kind of, it diminishes debate. It makes us all sound like polarised, racist idiots. And I think that regardless of whether you're a member of the Conservative Party or not, these people are going to be, one of these people is going to be our prime minister. The tone of the conversations that we have about how we move our country forwards to a position of success rather than a position of recession, inflation, economic downfall um, is important. And I think turning on each other is definitely not the way to do it. So, I mean, we've seen a week of sort of blue on blue attacks and now we're seeing a kind of right wing, left wing polarisation, vilifying the enemy. We're not the enemy. Um, and, and I think party politics just doesn't represent most people's experience in, in the UK today. Okay, um, yeah. I don't think people are that um, polarised or radical in, in their thoughts. They're just more thoughtful. Yeah, and, and, and weeks of it to come. So it'll be interesting to see how much yeah. of, that, of those attacks or not happen. Um, Pete, I'm going to move us on. We've got very little time for this particular section, I'm afraid. But um, there's a story about Will Smith that you've picked out uh, from the Daily Mail, uh, months on from that famous slap at the Oscars. You just summed up the story there, months on. Four months later, he's apologised and said, I'm here if you want to take my apology. I'm, I'm just gobsmacked. Four months on. It takes a man to apologise. He's done himself a lot of damage. He knows he's done a lot of damage. And that's why he's got to apologise now. But it's too late. Too little, too late. It was a disgrace. He sent out shockwaves within the industry. And, I mean, violence. He's He's got a huge following and he's sending out violence to kids. And I just thought it was terrible. Four months later, I think he's a disgrace disgrace. It, it was a very shocking moment, wasn't it? And I think he says in, in the video that he made of the apology, I think he said Chris Rock wasn't quite ready to speak to him yet. Um, <laughs> who knows when that might happen. Um, Marianne, let's, let's uh, clip along at a pace and move to the front of the FT. I haven't got it in front of me, so you're going to have to talk me through this, but it's about China and the cost of living, isn't it? Yeah, right. So uh, this is Tony Danker, who's the head of the Confederation of British Industry, the CBI. Um, and he's basically saying that lots of British companies are rethinking their supply chains and trying to disentangle themselves from China because they're basically worried that there's a new um, a sort of a souring of East-West relations. That's the, the kind of the flavour in, in Washington. Um, uh, Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, whoever's going to become prime minister, will possibly sort of double down on that so that those strained relationships between the UK, the US, the West and China are going to be worse off. And so companies are going to have to look for where they source their, their, um, their okay. uh, products from. 
And that basically, bottom line, is bad for business, but it's also um, going to be more expensive. It's going to drive up inflation. So government needs to listen to business. Tony Dank is absolutely right. I'm, I'm going to move and ask you in about 10 seconds to say, ask whether or not you um, watched the last episode of Neighbours. It's inside uh, tomorrow's Mirror, Pete. Uh, in, in a word, did you see it? In a word, yes, I did see it. And I went on a pilgrimage to Ramsey Street. That's what a fan I was. 